Have you been overlooked for promotion? This is the topic for today, you guys, and I'm going to tickle your brain. And I'm also going to probably, I think I'm going to make you feel bad. But we need to face facts and the truth, right? In life, that's the only way forward. Because when I was talking about this topic, it made me feel very uncomfortable. But hey, we need to get into it. And I also have a, uh, a question to organizations. Have we confused potential with behavior? Because behavior is the reason you are not getting promoted. Not bad behavior, just your behavior or your inability to demonstrate the behavior that, or that the next level requires. Hi, I'm Sylvia, an organizational psychologist, and I talk about everything and anything that is related to HR, people management. So hit the subscribe button because I really would like this channel to grow to help individuals to make sense of the corporate world, help leaders and managers to think differently about people management practices. But most importantly, I would love to help HR to to create better employee experiences so we can all have a better time at work. Now let's get di di uh, let's dive into this topic because I'm sure that you have been overlooked for promotion. I certainly have. And what do we do when it happens? Well, we get bitter, we get resentful, we get into our victimhood, right? Oh, everybody's stupid here. And we're just passing and uh, looking everybody, the next 10 people, in the next 10 years, getting that promotion that we wanted, but we never got. And we never bother looking into the reason. Never bother looking at why. We start blaming, oh, the stupid guy, because he knows people. Yes, that's part of it. Oh, because he's whatever. But what is that whatever? And that's the behavior. So I was having a lunch with my friend who is a clinical psychologist. Um, he's a PhD, he's a psychologist. And... She, is, she wants to get into different circles of people, being a board of directors at, at more senior level, right? So she has never done that because her background is different, right? She's a psychologist. But now she's doing her own business, so it's time to, you know, go, go up. And she was talking to somebody and she's, that person said, you need to learn the behavior, and the penny just dropped for her. I need to learn the behavior. And that is the second way of getting your promotion. First one is your network. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, who you know, that's, that saying is true. We have all seen it in organizations. So I would like you guys just to think about your experiences, right? You remember, I'm all about experience. I love data and science. But I also like to understand and acknowledge people's experiences because those are real. Um, and the second one is the behavior. Now, let's break that down. But before we do, I would like to give you a, a quote from Skinner, um, a famous psychologist, behavioral psychologist. Behavioral psychology probably would not be where it is today without Skinner's work. So I really love his work. My favorite area of psychology is personality psychology and the second one is probably behavioral i love human behavior so skinner said behavior is a function of its consequences think about that behavior is a function of its consequences now what that means is the behavior is shaped by the consequences it produces Jordan Peterson said something very similar. If you want people, if you want to understand why people behave in a certain way, look at the consequences of that behavior or the outcome of that behavior. It's the same thing. I, JP loves Skinner's work as well. So I think he got it from, from him. But it's the same thing. If you want to understand why did you do that, look at the outcome. Why do you behave in a certain way? Look at the outcome, right? Now, not in every case, human beings are very complicated, but it's most of the time. So let's break this down because every one of us, most of us would say, people should get promoted based on competence, right? 
And I agree. You remember a cup of tea? There's no conversation without a cup of tea. So people get promoted, should get promoted based on performance. 100%. But we all know that is not what's happening in organizations, right? People get promoted for so many different reasons. And we actually don't really look at it. Why? And here is the thing. And I would like you guys to pay attention to this because this is the painful part. But if you can come to terms with it and overcome that, then you break your bond, you break the wall that is holding you back. And if you can change your behavior, obviously. Um, so let's say you are extremely competent in your job. You are doing a good job. You have the skills, the knowledge, even the competency behaviors or the behaviors that are in the competency framework. So here I'm not talking about the stupid competency frameworks when I talk about behavior that takes you up there. Here, you are doing everything that the company is asking you to do in that certain role. You behave in that certain way, you have the job, uh, knowledge, the skills, the competencies, right? Now that is going to keep you here. Sorry, there is not going to get you the promotion. What is going to get you the promotion is this. Two ways in, your network. So the saying, not what you know, but who you know is true. 100%. We have seen it. We have witnessed it. We even been part of it. Tell me that you never use your, your network for promotion. We all did. Or you will. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. So you enter or get that promotion through your network. You either have the competency to back this with, or, or you don't. And that will define what kind of job you are going to do. Okay, as a leader, as a manager. The second one is what this lady was talking about, learn the behavior, is the behavior that requires for the next level. And this is what we don't have. And this is what nobody is talking about. So the com companies, organizations, I think we have confused potential with this, with behavior. Because if you can project yourself in a certain way and you see that with people who are getting really, really high, they are just, you know, galloping through that career ladder. Um, they have that behavior, that, that confidence, maybe with slight arrogance, right? That not necessarily the competence that needs to do that job, but the behavior, the way they present it, they I can do it, so confident, I can make decisions. Whatever that behavior is, they have it. And this is what they present, not their competence. None of them going, oh, look at how knowledgeable I am, how many certificates and PhDs and, and master degrees. Nobody, no, they are not talking about that. They are the ones we call them the charmers, the talkers. They can talk the talk, but not walk the walk, doing the job. Because that's not what we value. That's not why we promote people. They, we promote them for charisma, right? Charismatic leader. They are sitting. You know enough people in a senior leadership role who don't know the job, but they present themselves extremely well. That's their strength. But that strength got them there. And behavior is what is getting you there. And it's not a coincident that people are saying that you know the circle of your friends or the the environment that you are surrounded by will predict your future because you immediately pick up on that behavior and you start behaving that way so you're gonna go the same direction as the people around you so if you are with the, with the type of people who are stagnant and doing a fantastic job, you need to break out and do a different or, or behave in a certain way that will give your employers or the future employers the impression that you can do that job. And it's not through your skills and knowledge and, and expertise. You know that, I know that through experiences. But I never actually thought about 
the behavior because we start blaming people oh because they know someone but then you also know people who come into the organization right and six months later being promoted no network they don't really know anybody that well right of course they made friendships but they presented themselves in a way that the organization not think that this person can do the job of that based on behavior nothing else It's painful, hey? So if you want to go ahead, demonstrate the behavior that is required around, uh, up there, whatever is the next role. I think it's industry dependent. I think it's workplace dependent. So what I would su suggest that if you are in an organization, look at what are the behaviors these guys are having who, who are in, that role, in those roles and and study them, observe what are they doing and start learning from them. So don't blame the guys up there. Don't get into this victimhood and oh, poor me. Learn from them. They are not your enemies. They are actually your teachers. They are showing you the way, but you make them your enemies. They are not. And then you're going to say, yeah, but I don't want to be like them. But don't pick up on the bad behaviors. Pick up on the good ones that got them there. I'm sure they have plenty. Maybe with the employees, they are horrible because I know leaders like that. But what you can learn from them, that they are very good managing up. Okay, what do they do over there? Because that's what I need to learn. Not the bad behavior towards employees. You're not going to do that. So that's going to make you a better leader, a manager, or whatever positions you are placing yourself in. You're going to skip that. You always skip the bad one, but you always take the best from everyone. Okay, what else? What is he doing managing up there? Okay, he's very communicative. He's playing the game. I don't like it, but you know what? I can do it in my way, in alignment with my values. I can play that game. Okay, so don't reject everything that you don't like because you are just blocking yourself. And then you're going to end up saying, but I don't even want that role. Of course you do. You just don't know how to get it. And that's why you are saying that I don't want to, I don't need, I'd rather sleep on myself. I'd rather be that, I don't need the hustle. You do, most of us do. And that's just a defense mechanism. That's just a coping mechanism. Oh, I don't want it. Of course you do, because if we gave it to you tomorrow, you would be happy as Larry. And that's the truth. So it's hard because you don't know, but learn and try and try again and try again until you get the hang of it and yeah, I do it, I made it. And after that, you get that one position up based on learning that behavior. After that, it's going to be an easy, easy sailing. So those guys who are just galloping through their career ladder, uh, they figured it out. And I think we should learn from them instead of hating them and blaming everybody because that just says a lot more about you than, than them. They figured it out and, and kudos to them, you know, you can't always rely on your skills and knowledge and behavior It's good to have it, but that's going to keep you in your current state. So think about that, because I think it was a good afternoon for me as well. We all been there or you will be in, uh, in that situation. And just to, to know, competence will not give you promotion. <laughs> behavior will. People need to see that behavior so they think you have the potential to do the job. Now, it's wrong because you probably don't, but that's how you get up. And from then onwards, it is your responsibility to develop that level of competence that requires, for you, requires you to do a great job in that role. Because if you are just getting the roles without having the skills, the knowledge, the expertise, whatever that role requires, um, to back with, not just you're going to add to the already existing large pool of bad leaders and managers. You're just going to add one more yourself. We don't want that. Get that promotion, learn the behavior, have the skill, and then you can have it all. Hopefully, inshallah. Well, see you next time. I hope this helped.